question of the day. Where is the best place to start a farm? Well, we were having a live question and answer time with Joel Salatin just a couple weeks back, and one of the attendees asked this question. The answer will surprise you. cold weather any suggestions on where and how to start now I don't know if they mean where and how to start to get out of Southern California any relocation yeah. suggestions yeah well um, I, you know I, I, look everybody has uh, biases I have biases uh, my bias is you know I don't want to be I don't want to be in a place that has that every five years destroys my home with a hurricane or a tornado so I, I tend to, you know, want to be in a, um, you know, a, a safer, you know, weather kind of place like that. I don't want to be in a floodplain uh, down by a river. Um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to have weather anomalies, so you might as well locate somewhere uh, where it's, you know, a little bit better than that. And then once you, once you deal with the weather, then look at terrain, look at topography. Uh, you know, there's hard land and easy land. Uh, steep, steep, rugged land is hard land. Uh, gentle and, and flat and gentle rolling land is easy land to work with. And so think about terrain, think about topography, and now think about markets. Um, I would much rather, this is a rule of thumb, I would much rather have 20 acres within 30 minutes of a city of 200,000 than have 1,000 acres a uh, hundred miles from a Coke machine. Now I, I'm not I'm not advocating drinking Coke. I'm just saying that it's much better to have a small acreage near a market base than a large acreage far away from a market base. Because if you're going to brand yourself and direct market, try to pick up some pennies selling off your your doorstep or or you know developing a local clientele, it's going to be really really hard if there's nobody around. And so um, so so think about a smaller acreage near a metropolitan area rather than a larger acreage uh, farther away. And then, um, and then, you know, you mentioned the, you know, regulatory environment and things like that. Um, you know, every state has regulations. Some are better than others. I will tell you that uh, probably the least regulated state in the country is, is Missouri. But what's interesting is right now, um, I think Missouri is getting about a hundred homesteaders moving to Missouri every single day. It's like the number one destination in the country. Well, the problem with that is if all the homesteaders move there, who's going to buy from you? You know, you, you, there's no market. And so I actually think that, that in many cases, places like California or, you know, Connecticut or Massachusetts or Rhode Island, New Jersey, that are, that are very heavily regulated um, because they have a, a kind of, um, you know, uh, an elite foodie, foodie, greeny uh, awareness that that overcomes the, the negative regulation. Here's the point. There's no paradise this side of eternity. So you pick your, you know, you pick your demons and, um, and, and, and I'm much rather um, kind of just, just be in a, be in a place where everybody loves me, but the bureaucrats than be in a place where, uh, there's where there's just you know where every everybody is like me and and there's no and there's no market at all and so um, mm -hmm. you know th those are and 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 rain rain and not rain I mean I, I uh, plenty of people live in you know Arizona Utah Nevada and places like that but that's that's hard that's hard country that's really hard going and uh, if you if you take the uh, the capitalization money per per dollar of production possible whether it's whether it's uh, carrots or, um, or or cows the the cost even though the cost of land in a arid area is way cheaper than it is in a more temperate area with better I'm, I'm going to divide these at, at below 20 and above 20 inches of rainfall a year let's take 20 inches is kind of a, a, a benchmark there. Um, the, the under 20 acreage is going to be uh, less per acre, but the over 20 is going to be more. But the cost 
um, I mean, I, I gave you an example right now in like New Mexico, you know, you can buy land for 500 bucks an acre, but it takes, you know, it takes 40 acres to grow a cow. Well, that's a cost of $20,000 here where I am here, where I am in Virginia, the land costs $5,000 an acre That's 10 times as much, but we can raise a cow on two acres. That's a, that's a land to cow cost of $10,000 as opposed to $20,000. And so, um, so the actual uh, capital land capitalization cost to the, to the productive capacity of the land actually drops as you go to a more uh, temperate area than it does in a, you know, in a more uh, brittle environment. So that's something you want to keep in mind as well. That is really, really good information, especially on the, I've seen that migration from highly populated areas to places like Missouri. And I think as market farmers, direct to consumer, are we thinking about that when we make those decisions? And I really hope that we are. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, the thing is that um, that you know, the average American farmer is now 60 years old and there are there are people, I mean, I, I get a, a steady flow. I mean, I just got another letter today. I, I don't get a letter every day, but it seems like almost every day from someone looking for a young partner to actually, to manage their farm, take over their farm or someone that they can, they can inherit their farm to or do a do a, a lease purchase arrangement and that so that's why i'm a big believer and and um you know your uh, your your deal with um you know uh, start small and be incremental is so uh great on this because what you need yes yes think big start small right don't quit that's a great great slogan but the the, the thing i like about it is what you need is a toehold if you can get a toehold, so so if you can get a toehold and get um, and get started, get a brand recognition, get some self confidence. What'll happen is that all, as as these farmers go out of business, you know, right now in the next about twelve to fifteen years, fifty percent half of all farmland, all farm equity, land, buildings, and equipment. Is going to change hands in the next 15 years because of the old, the elderly American farmer. Most of their kids don't want the farm, but they don't want to lose the farm. And so, if you can get a toehold anywhere, that's why I'm, I'm a big believer in being being near an urban sector. If you can, um, I, I know I know a, a, a couple right now that bought you know right right on a great big interstate. You know they only got like 10 acres, but it's on a major big intersection. Well, guess what? Now they've leased. A farm down the road, another farm down the road, another farm down the road, and so they're able to scale. But they, but but they've got the little toehold that has you know fifty thousand cars going by the front gate every day. That's the kind of situation you want to look at. Don't worry about right. buy, buying the whole enchilada out the gate. Get a toehold. Get 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 a toehold, and then you can expand as you learn the community, get a good reputation, pay your bills. And as people start to appreciate what you're doing, you'll have opportunities come to you that you never even imagined. Yeah. And not only that, but if you do find a more profitable angle, you can pivot without a bunch of cargo flying off the sides. Right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have a speedboat instead of an aircraft carrier. Right. Exactly. If you guys would like the full one hour question and answer time with Joel Salatin, you can download it as a podcast from The Shepherdess Podcast in iTunes and Spotify.